any additional uh, traffic uh, device will probably re result in uh, some safer uh, conditions for both drivers and uh, pedestrians. It's always an argument of, you know, does the signal really make it safer? In some cases uh, it may, in some cases it may not, because we've had some, some cases where signals actually have um, more access after signal. So, so sometimes it's hard to judge. I know in the Warden and Lupin, we've been looking at um, signals for a number of years because there has been concerns from the residents to uh, have um, signals installed at this location because of the, the amount of traffic on Ward. So it's a difficult question to answer. Will the signals make it safer? You really can't tell. Um, now, what's the cost of each of these uh, traffic signals? Traffic signals generally in a range of maybe 150 to about 170 thousand dollars per location. And you don't remember? You don't? None of these even come close to meeting the warrants, and you don't recommend them. So basically, you're saying council approving 450 thousand or almost a half a million dollars of taxpayers' money, which you don't think. Um, or you, it doesn't meet the warrants and, you and your staff doesn't our, support Our three reports do not recommend the installation of these signals because they fail to meet the warrants. Any of these pedestrians um, in the last few weeks been killed at any of these intersections? Uh, in the last couple of weeks there's no fatalities at this, uh, these intersections, but on the, um, the signals that are proposed in Finch, unfortunately there was a pedestrian fatality last fall. Were Finch and Blackbird? Yes. Okay. And you said probably the closest one out of these three is Warden and Lupin. You've been studying that for a few years? We, we, we've been studying that for, I know, maybe uh, my knowledge at least 20 years ago we, we, we were looking at it. The, um, the signals at, uh, proposed signals at Pilkington, the, the, the second um, report refers to an, uh, to relate to a new development that was uh, recently completed in the last couple of years. The third signal on Finch uh, is accommodating an existing uh, subdivision that's been in place for about 20 years, but Finch Avenue actually has changed its character because of the recent uh, grade separations that were built at Morningside Finch, so the traffic patterns have changed, and that unfortunately resulted in one fatality last fall. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Welsh. Um, I'll speak, Madam Speaker. Okay. Um, Councillor Kelly, your name is in the middle. To whom are you? Was that going to be a question of staff? Traffic, um, traffic on Ward Nav is about 40, um, almost 47,000 uh, vehicles. 47,000 cars a day on Ward Nav. What? challenge does that represent to people trying to exit that community? It does, uh, it does present a problem of uh, residents uh, trying to exit that, that community, but, but there, there's a why. Because the, the traffic is relatively high on Warden, but uh, it, there is still gaps that you... you is that what it says in the report? That's it. Okay. Uh, now we're going to go to speakers. Councillor Ford, you held the item. Yes, uh, three items. You so we packaged them, right? Yes. So it's five minutes for all three. I'm going to move receipt um, for SC 31.8, SC 31.9, and SC 31.14. Um, it, it, it really comes down to um, you know it doesn't meet the warrants. Um, there's a half a million dollars here that we could be saving. If it didn't meet the warrants, even come close to meeting the warrants, then you know what? It might be justified. Yes, we've had a, a rash. We've all known about these pedestrians being killed. Um, these intersections have nothing to do with it, except for the one last year. Um, so you know what? We we don't we can't sit here and justify. I couldn't go to the taxpayers and say I just spent a half a million dollars tonight on inter on uh, lights at intersections, but don't meet the warrants. And they said, well, why are they putting in? Because the local councillor talks to a few people in the area and doesn't listen to staff, gets a report from staff, staff goes out, spends thousands of dollars on top of the $450,000, that's why I'm rounding it up to uh, half a million dollars, and they come back and say, no, it doesn't meet the warrants. So, 
My, my question is, really, why doesn't someone take the bull by the horns, and why doesn't someone just change, just say, forget it? We don't, we don't need staff to do these. Speed humps, stop signs, traffic signals, we don't need any of these studies to be done. Leave it up to the local councillor and their community, and let's just put them in whenever the councillor feels like it. That's exactly what's happening down here. Why Mr. Walsh and his staff waste time to go out and do a traffic study and bring a report to council, and we say here at night to, to go through this, it's almost every single council meeting, there's something on this agenda that doesn't meet the warrants. I'd almost go back and I can swear it's almost every council meeting. It doesn't make sense. I understand what the local council is doing. I can understand that you get pressure from your constituents. There's an election coming up in a few months. You know, you're going to have to say that to them. But then, if you tell them the flip side of it all, and tell them there's, all, you know, everything else, well then, obviously, they'll, they'll see the light. They'll see that, you know, the half a million dollars isn't warranted, and that's why they have property tax increases, because there's money that's misspent. And this is exactly why. So, you know what, it, it, just, it, it just doesn't make sense when people, when local councillors are making decisions. That's what's coming down. I didn't think any of us were traffic engineers here, unless I, I don't know um, your backgrounds very well. But traffic engineers go to school for this reason: to study traffic, get a degree, and come back and give us this information. But yet we totally disagree with what they say. We know more than what they know. They're professionals at it, but. We know more than them. It's like them coming into this council and sitting at your seat and telling you how to do your job. And you'll sit here and say, well, I've been here five, ten years. How can you sit here and tell me what's going on on the council floor? But that's what we're telling Gary Walsh. That's a slap in the face that we're giving to the, the bureaucrats here at City Hall. When we totally disregard what they say, we're telling them how to do their job. That, that, that's, that's, that's absolutely not right. You know what? You, 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 can't, you can't conduct business like that. So I'm surprised that Mr. Walsh even listens to us, even does a report, when the councillor asks for a report. Hey, if I was Mr. Walsh, I'd say, it doesn't matter what I write, the council's going to approve it, forget it. And I would literally say it. And write, you know, here, do what you want on the report, because that's what's going to happen. The councillor's going to do it. This is going to get approved. And, and it's absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. But it's an election year. I'm surprised in the next, uh, we're probably going to have 10 of these next, next month, and another 10, another 10, another 10, and basically just currying favors to your constituents to get votes to get reelected. But it's the wrong way of doing it. It's the wrong way of doing it. We should go back to the map of the Ombuds person that shows you who's doing the work and who's not. That's who's doing the work. The white means good, the dark green means bad. And the, not, not doing it this way. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ford. Our next speaker. Council. And I'd like to address uh, the issues because, first of all, uh, unknowns to the rest of the council members, we did commission a report from staff uh, a number of months ago to uh, look at the amount of traffic lights uh, and other traffic uh, measures that we have uh, put in Scarborough and uh, look at uh, ones that met warrants and ones that didn't meet warrants and the cost, etc. So we went through a whole exercise analyzing the types of uh, requests that we made at uh, Scarborough Community Council over a number of years. And so we, we capsulized that information. One of the issues with warrants, as you well know, warrants don't tell you the full story. As an example, the traffic control study at Warden Avenue Loop and Drive. Are you aware that when city staff went to do their observation, they themselves could not make a left turn on Lupin going on to Warden Avenue. Now I'm very proud of the fact that I believe most of these Scarborough councillors know Scarborough relatively well. And I think when we talk about Warden Avenue south of the 401 where the road goes down, uh, we looked at that very closely. And this community that Councillor Kelly represent, represents has absolutely, Madam Chair, no access out to either Ellesmere, where there's a road that comes out of this community, nor to Warden Avenue. Absolutely none. And so therefore, looking at that situation, looking at 
that even our staff couldn't get out of the street, that had something to say. So while the warrants may say something, people avoid that intersection because they know they can't make the turns out there safely. With respect to the uh, traffic control study uh, on Danforth Road and Pilkington Drive, which is in Councillor Heaps' uh, area, that was a whole new subdivision that was put, put in there. And one of the misses that we, we had is that the developer should have put a light in that, in that uh, subdivision. And again, with respect to the amount of new uh, houses going into that whole uh, area of uh, Warden, uh, Danforth Road in that whole area, there's lots and lots and lots of developments going on. And we looked at that as well and uh, scrutinized, scrutinized it very carefully. We also turned down uh, light requests, just so people know, okay? Councillor DeBarrowbaker will attest to that. The one at Finch Avenue East and Blackburn Gate Drive, the whole road configuration changed. New bridge, new subdivision on the north side, subdivision on the south side, which again has difficulty with their access as well, and we had one pedestrian death. And again, most councillors from Scarborough, knowing the area quite well, understand that the whole dynamics have changed there. Now, what I want to also express to the councillors, it's not a question of election year. The question is that all the councillors from Scarborough, on all three lights, unanimously, unanimously supported it. So while sometimes you get into a situation you want to do what's great for your uh, constituents, the rest of the councillors say, you know what, we know he's doing his job, but we've got to do the right thing. It doesn't warrant a light. This was not the case. There wasn't one dissenting vote on all of these three lights. And so when we looked at it, when we looked at it, did you dissent? So when we looked at it, we just didn't, you know, flippantly say, oh yeah, let, let's uh, give Councillor Kelly a light because we like Councillor Kelly. He's Mrs. Kelly's favorite son. We didn't say that. We went through a very thorough analysis asking very difficult questions of both the councillor, the delegates that came to speak, city staff, etc. So the, the warrants are really only one component. It's not a question of it's either this or that. I think the, the issues that were brought forward and for the councillors in Scarborough to understand those locations and understand them very well and spending a lot of quality time looking at that, we're actually the Boy Scouts of the City of Toronto as far as I'm concerned because we tend to follow rules very, very closely. And in these particular cases, it happened to be the three in a row have come out. The amount of growth, the amount of growth is just flown to, uh, you know, e extrapolated significantly. And I'm sure if we, we had a, an opportunity, Councillor chose, there should have been a light there. It probably would have saved a life. It would have saved a life there. There's no question in my mind knowing that, that piece of roadway. So I would ask all our colleagues in City Council here to support not just Councillor Kelly, not just Councillor Cho or Councillor Heap with respect to their lights, but all of the councillors from the Scarborough Community Council who endorsed us unanimously and asked for your support because we are prudent with, with dollars of the city and we wouldn't ask otherwise if it wasn't an issue of safety, if it wasn't an issue that we understand our community very, very well and this was not done flippantly. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, thank you. And I know from experience that the staff are quite capable of taking a look at the situation and even though it doesn't meet the warrants, if there's an overriding safety concern or if they feel that it will make the si this situation safer, they will recommend putting in lights or stop signs or anything else to help make something safer. But what happens when you go and blow $500,000 that's not recommended by staff, it takes $500,000 away from some other situation where the lights really are warranted and where they really are needed and where they will improve safety. So what you're doing here is you're robbing safety. You're making it less safe for some people that aren't going to get the 500000 because you've spent them out here in Scarborough. And this isn't the first one you've done. You've done many of these out there that aren't warranted. And if you don't believe staff, why don't you move to get rid of them? Why don't you move to not have those reports here? Pardon? Speak through the chair, not to the... I kind of thought I was speaking to the chair. No, you weren't. You're speaking to the past speaker. Well, if, if you don't believe the staff, what's the sense of paying them all the money that we pay them? There must be dozens of traffic engineers out here in the city, and we... We pay them an awful lot of money to give us this professional advice that they're well trained to give us. But we don't listen to them. We get the thing and we say, counselors know best. 
I know my area better than that traffic engineer. That traffic engineer went to school but doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. Well, that's, a, that's ridiculous. That is a ridiculous, and if counselors really believe it, then stand up here and have the nerve to dismiss these people and save the taxpayers the dollars because you know best. Ta counselors know their words better. They know how to spend the $500,000, even though there are other areas out there that will meet the warrants, but they won't get the license time because the $500,000 is going somewhere else. So this is ridiculous. It should be turned down, and I hope you support Councilor Ford. Could you move anything? All right. Uh, ring the bells, please. Yeah, no. You're going to question me. Can you move? No. Yeah. Now, he did move. Yeah. Yeah. No. All right. The bells are ringing. There's no further speakers. I'd like a recording of this actual debate for purposes in the future. Councillor <laughs> <laughs> Del Grande. Yes, I need to take them individually. They're separate items, and therefore they must be taken separately. So we'll start with. Uh, what did the staff say about the trees? Scarborough Council 31.8. Order, please. <laughs> Traffic control. Signal study. Warden Avenue and Lupin Avenue. First way uh, to <laughs> Councillor Sondercook. This is a receipt motion by Councillor Ford. All in favor of the receipt motion. Recorded vote. Time is money. Councillor Peruzza, please. The motion to receive does not carry. The vote is 3 to 26. On the item, all in favor? Recorded. Councillor Carroll, please. On the item, Councillor Peruzza, please. Councillor Hall, please. The item carries 29 to 2. Next item is Scarborough Community Council 319 Traffic Control Signal Study, Danforth Road and Hilkington Drive, Ward 35. Receipt motion is before you. I gather it's a recorded vote. Councillor Peruzza, please. Councillor Cho, please. 31.9, yes. Which one is up there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Cho. Motion to receive does not carry. The vote is 2 to 29. On the item, recorded vote, I gather. Councillor uh, Carroll, please. On the item. <laughs> Councillor Melchin, please. The item carries 30 to 2. The next item is. Uh, <laughs> all right. Please ring the bell. And I remind members, even though this is not on television, it's still recorded. Councillor Ford. There's some members of the press here. All right. The bells, I believe, are signaling that we may vote on this item. Um, the, I, I don't believe Councillor Ford put a motion. So, uh, the item 
is before you with the recommendation. Recorded. All recorded votes. <laughs> On the item, there was no traditional receipt motion. The item, there's no receipt motion. The item carries 32 to 2. Let it go. All right. Next item. MM 45.4, status update on the Toronto Computer Leasing Inquiry and the Toronto External Contracts Inquiry. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Walker. It was held by Councillor Ben and Wong. He's not here now. Okay, all in favor? Opposed, that is carried. Now, we move to um, MM 45.4. 13 was creation of candidate protection fund, um, and I'm going to by Councillor Stintz and Councillor Palacio. That's been dealt with. Um, next is MM 45.17. Uh, it's uh, the one of the pedestrian safety motions, um, and I, Councillor uh, Perks is suggesting that. Uh, MM 45.17, feasibility of reducing the speed limit by 10 kilometers per hour on selected streets throughout the city, moved by Councillor Sondercook, seconded by Councillor Stintz, with MM 45.21, causes and recommendations, pedestrian fatality, it's already been decided? Okay, so they will be considered together. So, and Councillor Sonder Cook held the first one, so I'm not really sure how I'm going to deal with this. And Councillor Ashton held the other one. Okay, so I'll start with Councillor Sonder Cook. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'll be very brief. I'm, I concur with the suggestion to blend the two. I think that uh, that's going to help the cause here at the end of the day. But I just wanted to share with my colleagues that Mr. Welsh uh, explained to me that my September 22nd motion on this item. Uh, he was having difficulty dealing with because it was too cumbersome to, to go across the city of Toronto to try and, and earmark streets that uh, would be eligible for a 10 kilometer per hour uh, reduction. So my suggestion was to get the... Just a moment, Councillor Saundercup. Do I have questions of staff on this no. item? Okay, I'm going to step you down. God forbid. But in your experience, how many of these fatalities, give me a ballpark figure, are actually speed related? And that's not on the part of pedestrians, that's not part of cars. The, the, there's a cer certain percentage of fatalities are, are caused by speeding, and either the driver's side hitting a hydrophobe or a truck driver's hitting a pedestrian. But what we found is in the 80s, our average yeah. number of fatalities in, uh, across the city would be well over, say, 100, 120. And for the last 20 years, it's dropped considerably. And last year, we had only 48 fatalities. So the fatalities have been dropping. The number of accidents have been dropping. And even the percentage of pedestrians involved in accidents have been dropping. Okay, so my question was, how many of those accidents and fatalities are related to speed and how many through inadvertence, not paying attention, you know, those kinds of things? I, I don't have those figures. Can you ballpark it? It's, I really, can, I, I couldn't estimate. Okay, based on the last few days, the last month, 
how many of those well, are feed related? I, I think the, 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 um, <coughs> what I've obviously read in the media, and I haven't seen the actual show traffic report, but th there's very few of the, the uh, fatalities seem to be uh, been caused by speeding. No, 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 no. Yeah. I, no, no, no. All right, that's all the questions of staff. I'm closing that portion of this debate. Councillor Sondercook, I'm sorry I had interrupted your speech and I'm going to start your time again. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, for the benefit of Councillor Lindsay Luby, Councillor Ashton, uh, there is going to be a motion from Councillor Burks that uh, is going to give them some comfort. The intent here in this motion today is not for the councillor to recommend the streets that uh, will get the reduction. It's the, I'm requesting the councillor to make the suggestion of the streets then the professional staff would study it and either say yes, that's a good idea or no, it's not. It was going to speed up a process, Madam Speaker, that was the original motion of September 22nd for Mr. Welsh and his staff to go across the city. And I understand that's a, uh, a mammoth undertaking and we're, we're not going to do that. So, the, you know, the media have all been very, very concerned about this. You know, we, we should just take one minute to look at what happened in January. There wasn't snow on the ground. There wasn't ice on the ground. In fact, the conditions for pedestrians in January probably couldn't have been better. Yes, the darkness is there. And, and no expert that I've talked to in the last 21 days has been able to say what's been different for this rash of deaths on, on the roads in the GTA. Some in Toronto, some outside of Toronto. But regardless, the message that we as pedestrians members, Councillor Stitz and myself, is let's get more pedestrians out there. Well, if you're a senior and you're living in Toronto right now and you're hearing all the negatives, you're, you're not going to be encouraged to go out on the roads. If you're a parent want to get your, your kid, children to school, the, the message again is still very negative. So I think we want to bring some attention to the pedestrian to be safe. Yes, there's no blame on who's at fault here. It's just, it's a fatality for the pedestrian and it's not for the operator of the vehicle. So if we get a message out to the vehicle operators to go a little bit slower, that gives them more reaction time, and hopefully it'll save a life because it'll give the pedestrian a little more time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sondercook. Councillor Perk. Thank you, Speaker. I have a motion um, under item MM42.21, which is the motion moved by Councillors uh, Palacio and Lindsay Luby that City Council request the General Manager of Transportation Services to consider a proposal that members of Council submit a list of streets in their own wards that should have their speed limits lowered by 10 kilometers an hour. This would be in addition to the other suggestions in Councillor Palacio and Lindsay Luby's motion uh, reporting to identify the cause of each incident, making recommendations on actions that the City could take to prevent further fatal accidents. Essentially what it does is take two, two ideas that have come together in front of this council and ask the staff to weigh them together. Rather than saying councillors should go out today and start compiling a list or, or any other activity like that. It simply says to the, the general manager of transportation, please take a look at what's been happening, give us a report, give us suggestions, and when you're considering that, Consider also the suggestion brought to us by the Chair and Vice Chair of the Pedestrian Committee. I think it's an elegant way to, to get some work quickly on this, uh, this item and to, to allow the, the General Manager to weigh the pros and cons of different approaches. I appreciate the, the effort that the Pedestrian con uh, Committee has made, but we should try to do this as one unified approach rather than a number of different parallel approaches. I could speak at some length, I'm sure, about the merits of different approaches, but the hour is late, and I think we have a good way forward. So I'm going to leave it at that. All right, you have a question on your motion. Councillor Lindsay Luby, first. Actually, that had been on Councillor Sondercook, but you went so fast. Um, you didn't have a motion. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to answer Councillor Lindsay with this question. Well, I saw a motion. It's it before us. No, he did not. What, what is exactly then uh, 45.17 if not a motion? Oh, I see. 
if I may, after speaking to the clerk about the motion I put forward, I, I will your motion with I this understand. amendment would make their motion 17 redundant, so we wouldn't need to consider it. We would do it all yeah. simply as one pack. Again, what do you do when you say, okay, Street A should get reduced 10, because I think there's enough people on Street A that want it. Then, all the traffic goes to Street B. So they're going to say, aha, Street A got it. How about me? What's wrong with me? Then Street C says, you gave it to them. Well, what about me? It becomes a popularity contest. I understand. You see what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. And now. then it, for the local councillor, it is very difficult, I is it not? That. I appreciate to that. To deny anyone. And, and that was one of the concerns that I took to councillors Saunder Cook and Stintz when I suggested this motion as a way of resolving it. And what we have here is instead of a request for you to go out and start compiling a list of streets, it asks the general manager to consider whether this approach is a useful one. So if well, the client can go, say no. It, the general manager will have to report. He might report that we should take this approach to it specifically. He might report that all streets with a width of 45 meters have their speed reduced, he might report anything. We don't know yet, I don't want to prejudge it. What it does is, is ask his best professional advice about this approach. It doesn't put you in a position where you become the arbiter of which of your neighbors travel at what speed. Is, is this not sort of creeping it forward? That's the way I see it. And does he have a chance to say no to it? And would that be acceptable based on his advice? Would that be acceptable to you if he said no? I, I, I have always thought very, very highly of the advice of the General Manager of Transportation, and I can only think maybe of one occasion where I've disagreed with him. On most occasions, I've agreed with him. For example, uh, several recommendations he's made on my ward to reduce speeds uh, for very specific reasons. Having And we've had a wonderful working relationship, and I'm sure whatever advice he brings forward here will build on that relationship. So if he said no to one of your requests about lowering it, and he said no, of course you still have a wonderful relationship and you would agree with him. Well, at this point, I'm not asking him. No, no, I'm, I'm asking, asking you, yes. if he said no to this report, would you be satisfied? He might, uh, he might say no, and I might agree with him if his reasoning is good. He might say yes, and I might agree with him if his reasoning is good. Would you not if his reasoning is bad, no. somewhere in the middle, I might say no. I'm not going to give you a hypothetical, I'm sorry. I see. Thank you. Okay.